Imagine a future where the supply of rare earth elements, those precious metals critical for smartphones, electric vehicles, wind turbines, and military technology is no longer shackled by geopolitical tensions or ecologically devastating mining practices. Instead, picture a world where bacteria, yes, microscopic life, replaces the pickaxe, quietly extracting these elements from our waste. Welcome to the frontier of microbial biotechnology. Let's innovations in sustainable resource management, the microbial recovery of rare earth elements from various waste sources. This is not science fiction. This is the biotechnological revolution that could change how we recover strategic materials from the vast, overlooked reservoirs of urban and industrial waste. Let's begin with a basic understanding of what rare earth elements are. The term rare earth elements refers to 17 chemically similar elements, including the 15 lanthanides plus scandium and yttrium. Despite their name, they aren't particularly rare in Earth's crust, but their extraction and purification are notoriously difficult. That's because they rarely occur in concentrated deposits. Traditional mining of rare earth elements involves open pit mining, crushing, and chemical leaching, processes that produce radioactive tailings and toxic waste. With growing demand and environmental concern, scientists are turning to nature's ancient recyclers, microbes. Microbial recovery of rare earth elements, also called biomining or bioliaking, harnesses the natural ability of microorganisms to solubilize metals from solid mattresses. But how exactly does this work? To understand that, we must explore the three primary microbial strategies involved. One, bioliaking two, Biosorption 3. Bioaccumulation lets break them down one by one. Bioliaking is the microbial conversion of solid-bound metals into soluble forms. This process often involves acid-producing microbes like acetothiobacillus ferrooxidans, which oxidize iron and sulfur compounds to generate sulfuric acid. This acid, in turn, dissolves metal ions from the waste matrix. Now here's the exciting part. Recent research has shown that acidophilic bacteria can leach rare earth elements from industrial wastes like red mud, coal fly ash, phosphogypsum, and spent catalysts. Take red mud, for example. It's the byproduct of aluminum production and is loaded with iron, titanium, and rare earth oxides. A team of scientists from India demonstrated that sulfobacillus thermosulfidoxins can recover yttrium and lanthanum from red mud under thermophilic conditions, offering a more environmentally benign alternative to chemical leaching. Biosorption, on the other hand, involves the passive binding of metal ions to microbial cell surfaces, typically the cell walls, which are rich in functional groups like carboxyl, hydroxyl, and phosphate. Fungi, in particular, excel at biosorption. Their chitin-rich cell walls act like sponges, trapping rare earth elements from dilute solutions. Fungi like Aspergillus niger and Penicillium simplicissimum have demonstrated remarkable capacities to adsorb terbium, dysprosium, and europium from aqueous waste solutions. These fungi not only survive in harsh conditions, but can also thrive in the presence of multiple competing metal ions, making them ideal for treating mixed waste streams. Finally, we have bioaccumulation, where living microbes actively uptake and store rare earth elements inside their cells. This mechanism, while less understood than the others, offers intriguing possibilities. Genetically engineered microbes can be designed to express specific metal transporters or metal chelating proteins, enhancing their selectivity for rare earth elements. For example, a study published in Nature Communications reported engineered Escherichia coli strains expressing lanthanide binding peptides, which showed increased specificity and capacity for recovering neodymium and samarium from e-waste leachates. But where exactly do these microbes find their metallic targets? 
let's talk about the most promising waste sources for microbial recovery of rare earth elements. 1. Electronic Wasty Waste This is the fastest growing waste stream in the world. Old smartphones, laptops, fluorescent lamps, and hard disk drives contain small but significant amounts of rare earths like neodymium, yttrium, and europium. Traditional recycling struggles to recover these dispersed elements. Microbial methods, however, can selectively target rare earth elements using pretreatment steps followed by biosorption or bioaccumulation. Recent studies have shown that microbial consortia can leach over 80% of neodymium from shredded e waste magnets. 2. Coal fly ash and bottom ash. These are waste products from coal-fired power plants and contain appreciable concentrations of rare earth elements, especially light lanthanides like cerium and lanthanum. Researchers in the U.S. have used acidophilic bacteria like A. Ferrooxidans to extract up to 70% of cerium from fly ash residues. 3. Phosphogypsum, a byproduct of phosphate fertilizer production. Phosphogypsum contains not only radium and sulfate, but also a cocktail of valuable rare earths. Bioliaking using sulfobacillus thermosulfidoxins has shown promising results in rare earth element recovery from this source, especially when coupled with bioacidification steps. 4. Red mud. As we mentioned earlier, red mud is not just a toxic hazard. It's a rare earth element rich resource. The key challenge is separating rare earth elements from iron and aluminum without excessive energy input. Microbial consortia, particularly thermophilic ones, are showing increasing efficacy in this domain. 5. Spent catalysts and fluorescent lamps. Spent catalysts from oil refining and used phosphors from fluorescent lamps also contain europium, terbium, and yttrium. Fungal biosorption shows remarkable potential in capturing these metals, even from dilute solutions. But how do you scale microbial rare earth elements recovery? Laboratory success doesn't always translate to industrial viability. So, researchers are developing bioreactors, both stirred tank and heap leaching types, where microbes are cultured under optimal conditions for continuous rare earth elements extraction. Parameters like pH, temperature, oxygen levels, and pulp density are closely monitored. The biggest hurdle, process optimization and selectivity. Rare earths are often found with base metals, and microbial systems need to be tuned to extract only the desired elements. This is where synthetic biology and systems engineering enter the picture. In recent years, Scientists have begun engineering microbial, super strains capable of high-yield rare earth elements recovery. This involves inserting genes that code for rare earth elements binding proteins, overexpressing metal transporters, deleting genes that interfere with selectivity, using CRI-SPR tools to fine-tune the microbial genome. And what about economic feasibility? That's the million dollar question. While microbial methods reduce chemical use and carbon footprint, they're slower than conventional methods. However, in scenarios where the waste is abundant and environmental regulations are strict, like in the EU and parts of Asia, bio-based methods are increasingly cost competitive, especially when integrated into circular economy models. One promising strategy is hybrid systems where microbes handle pre-leaching or enrichment, and traditional hydrometallurgy completes the job. This reduces both costs and toxicity. Finally, let's touch on the future prospects. The field is still in its infancy, but rapidly evolving. Emerging trends include metagenomics to discover new rare earth elements by oleaking microbes from extreme environments. AI-assisted bioprocess optimization, microbial fuel cells that couple metal recovery with energy generation, 
decentralized biomining units for on-site waste processing in remote regions. And perhaps most exciting of all, the potential to use microbial systems for rare earth elements recovery in space missions, recycling electronics on the Moon or Mars, where shipping replacement materials from Earth is unfeasible. So, what does this all mean? The microbial recovery of rare earth elements is not just an academic curiosity. It's a necessary evolution in how humanity approaches the materials that power modern life. From smartphones to satellites, from electric motors to MRI machines, rare earths are everywhere. And now, microbes may be the key to keeping them in our hands and out of our landfills. If you enjoyed this deep dive into microbial rare earth elements recovery, hit the like button, subscribe, and ring the bell for more mind-expanding science content. This is Broadgence, and the revolution is microscopic.